Beck, and I'm the Manager of Research and Communications at the Institute of Marriage and Family Canada. Thank you very much for coming today. I'm going to take the opportunity right now in 10 minutes or less to tell you about a research project that I did last year. It's in your package. It's Canada's top uh, family-friendly cities. If you want to pull out this, you can sort of take a look as I talk. You have the picture of the family looking at the map. Uh, it looks like they're at the movies, and that's because reading an Institute of Marriage and Family Canada policy study is more fun than going out with your family. That's what that's <laughs> symbolic of. Uh, we examined in this Family Friendly Cities Index 33 census metropolitan areas. Uh, these are defined by Statistics Canada and we went with their definitions. That creates the most stable way to look at the data. And the five categories we chose to evaluate the cities on are community feel, education choice, cost of living, economic strength, and family independence. Some of these are more obvious than others, but I'll take a little time to explain all of those factors. Economic strength looked at the unemployment rate, since a city can hardly be considered family friendly if you can't find employment there. We also included in this category the average tax take for two parent and single parent families, understanding that if the government takes more of your money, you have less money to spend with and on your family. We also included government transfer payments to a region here, and we see that as being indicative of higher reliance on government in order to get by. And this may suggest a less friendly environment towards business, perhaps the absence of major employ employers, or perhaps limited opportunities in the private sector. The next category, in the cost of living category, we looked at the consumer price index, the cost of gas, the average rent for a two-bedroom apartment, uh, the rate of home ownership, and the average size of monthly mortgage payments, and it will be very self-evident that lower costs were associated with a higher grade in this category. For the education choice category, we examined the schooling options that are available to parents for their children. We quantified the number of private schools, public schools, and charter schools. And since education is provincial jurisdiction, we looked at whether the provinces are funding school choice or not. The provinces that fund school choice, uh, to a certain extent, are British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Quebec. Ontario funds uh, Catholic schools, as you'll know, and no, nothing else, so we gave them a middling grade for that. We, we saw more school choice as, as warranting a higher grade because we believe that when parents have the ability to choose the right educational environment for their children, um, they'll, be do, they'll do better in the long run. For community feel, um, we counted up, and I called each municipality myself, the kilometers of bike paths, the number of community centers, and also parks in the local area. Um, so we saw that as being a positive, and if you had more, then that resulted in a higher grade. We also looked at the percentage of people in that community who give to charity, and uh, we saw that as a a proxy, basically, for um, people who care about the, making the world around them a better place. Here we included also the crime rate, uh, higher crime rate meant a lower score. Um, so some of those things are obvious and those are all in the community feel category. Finally, in the family independence category, we included the proportion of households headed by two married parents, the proportion headed by a single parent, and the percentage of seniors living in a family rather than in an institution or alone. Uh, this category acknowledges an international consensus in the social science literature that says that family structure does indeed matter for children. And this is true even when we control for socioeconomic status. Um, when kids have two married parents, they fare better. And this is not to say, I hasten to add, that single parents don't do an admirable job and contribute to their communities, not at all. It simply reflects the outcomes that when we have more um, of single parent families in a community, you will see some outcomes that are not as desirable. And this is more clear when we look at our neighbors to the south and some of the inner cities. 
So we included that as an indicator of uh, family friendliness and we want to track with those statistics going forward as well. So without further ado, in case you don't have time to read the actual study, maybe you went to the movies with your family instead, um, the top grades for family friendliness went to Calgary, Edmonton, Guelph, Kitchener and Vancouver. The cities at the bottom with lower grades included Saguenay, Quebec, St. John, New Brunswick, St. John's, Newfoundland, Trois-Rivières, Quebec, and Thunder Bay, Ontario. Ottawa, where we are here in uh, this city, we got a B plus. And I'll mention at this point that no grade was a failing grade. All of our cities in Canada in international comparison are a great place to live. So our lowest overall grade was a C. That said, we did give some A pluses, and you'll see in the big scorecard at the back of the study, you'll see some A pluses and some Fs. Winnipeg, for example, got an A plus for low food and a low uh, household consumer price index. We didn't include weather in our family friendly um, <laughs> cities index. Maybe we'll do that next time. Toronto got an F for the high cost of housing. Um, it also got an A plus for the high percentage of seniors living in families. So all indices are subjective. We know this. Um, every index you'll ever look at is a subjective thing. What factors are included, what factors are not. Um, some may value precisely the opposite of what we consider to be good indicators. And we um, might say to those people that you can still use our family friendly index, you can just invert the scores accordingly. We intend to do this every five years with the census. We'll track with the cities and hopefully uh, allow for some friendly competition to compete for the most family friendly city in Canada. So you can watch for that with the next release of census data. So that concludes my research update. <laughs>